the grid view is the simplest way to show a list of items from a database. When I define a grid view, one of the things I define is what data source it connects to. In other words, how does this grid view get populated? Well, it gets populated based on that data source that I just created. So I will go and click on that and say, which data source do I want? I want SQL data source one. And there, as you can see, it knows what columns are in that data source, so it gives me sort of a start. Now, this is a very bare bones um, data grid. We can make this look a lot better and we can add a lot more functionality to it. But let's run it and see how it works. shows the data from that table. Now, let's look at a couple things. Let's do a couple things and, and look at a couple things. First thing I want to look at is I want to look at my web config file. If I open that, notice what I have in there is I have in my connection strings section of it, I have a connection string with the name HR database and some information about how to connect to that database. The data source oops, is interesting Because if you notice, between the pipes, between the vertical lines, it says data directory. What do you suppose data directory is? Well, where does our database live? App In the app data folder. So that pipe data directory, there's a way that you can configure exactly what directory that database lives in. And by default, it's the app data directory. This is what your web config should look like. It should have that pipe data directory pipe so that it knows that it's in the application's data directory. Why do I say this is how it should look like? If you follow the instructions and do it the way that I suggested, this is what will happen. Now, what that means is when you upload your assignment and I download it, in both cases, it's going to find the app data directory because the app data directory is not hard-coded in there. What it should not look at like is it should not show an actual physical path. In other words, it shouldn't say, see documents and settings, Visual Studio, um, slash Jerry, all right? assuming your name is Jerry or whatever. All right? Because when I then go and download it to my machine to test your code, it isn't going to work because I don't have those folders all right, in my, in my place. So if you use that parameter data directory like that, then it will be adjusted when I move it to my machine. It's a relative address and it will then find it uh, as opposed to having it hard coded. Very similar to any of you that have me in the HTML class when you refer to an image, you don't put in the file is being C colon blah, 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 blah. Because when I copy it to my machine, I'm not able to view it. Neither will people on the internet be able to view it. So it's the same idea here. If it says data directory, you're in business. Other things that we can <coughs> do. We can spruce this up a little bit. We can click on this and we can pick the auto format. And since it's a rainy day, it's always a rainy day for this class, I'll pick the format called Rainy Day. And now my grid view looks like that. I can go into Edit Columns if I want to, and I can change the header. So I could uh, change it to maybe something that made more sense to the people reading this. And 
employee number. Name. Email. Or you could even say, you know what, it's not a good idea to be splashing social security numbers around the internet, so I will go and I'll delete that column, and I won't show it. And now when we look at it, it's formatted in a much more understandable way. Typically, um, columns in databases are, are, are you know, the, 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 the words are often abbreviated harshly. You know, and they're not necessarily very readable, and it's easy to be confused. So, you can change the column header uh, in there to, to, to something that will be more meaningful to the people that are using it. <coughs> Eventually, what are we going to want to do? Well, we're going to want to show the department name, not the department code, and, and we'll, we'll get to that at some point. Now, I want to do one more thing before we go today, all right? I want to create a second page that accesses the database. All right. Let's say it will give a list of the departments. Now, go ahead. That data source, then, it's not the whole database. It's just what you... Right. Those right. If you want to... Selected from the table. Yeah, a, a, a simple way to think of a data source is it's a connection string plus a query. All right. So, it's a connection string because it needs to know what database to point to. It's a query because it needs to know what data to pull out of that database. Now, when I make my page for the department here, what's going to be the same, what's going to be different in the, in the, the, the data source? It's going to be pointing to the same database, right? I am not pulling the departments out of a different database than I'm pulling employees. So therefore the connection string will be the same. I don't want to make a new connection string for this, right? I want to use a connection string that's already been defined because I only want that connection string defined once and in one place. The query, however, will be different because now I'm interested in information about the department not information about employees. So, let's go in, let's make a new page. We'll call it department. configure it. Now when I configure it, if I look, that HR database connection string has already been completed. So I just select that again. All right. That's the connection string I used the very first time around. So I will pick and use that again. Next. Now I want to see everything from the department table. Test the query. Finish. All right. I'll go and add my grid view to this and associate it with that data source. And run it, and away we go. Now if we look at the code for this, Here's the code for my SQL data source. Here's where it's picking up the connection string parameters from the web config file, the connection string section. Here's the SQL statement. And here's the data grid view with all the stuff that it needs. Again, you could type that in if you knew all those attributes, but I typically 
we'll use the, the design view to sort of get, get the ball rolling on that and, uh, and create them quickly. Questions about this? So, what are you going to have in general? All right. Let's, for the sake of simplicity, assume that there's only one database. You should then only have one connection string in your web config file that points to your database. You will have on every page one or more than one SQL data source. Every page that accesses the database, that is. One or more than one data source on the page. You can have more than one data source, right? And we'll look at examples of that. Maybe I want to see on the top of the page information about an employee and on the bottom of the page a list of all the projects that that employee has worked on. In which case there'd be two data sources. One to show the employee information, one to show the project information. All right. So there'll be one or more than one SQL data source that pulls whatever data that you need. It's not really relevant for the first assignment because for the first assignment it's obvious, it should be obvious that there's only one data source. But for future ones, <coughs> a common mistake students make is trying to do everything in one data source when actually, you know, it's okay to have more than one data source. It actually makes your life easier. All your data sources, however, will share in common that one connection string. And then you will likely have, for every data source, some sort of user interface element, some sort of visual element that shows the data from that data source on the page. Questions on any of this? Yes? Can you show data from two data sources, like with a grid view? Or, or one of those? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to answer the question that I think you're asking. All right. <clears throat> if I want to show data <clears throat> from do from two data sources, I probably just want to create one data source that combines all the data into one data source. All right. So, for example, if I wanted to show, like in this example, where I show the employee information, if I wanted to show the employee information along with the department information, like the department name, I don't have two data sources. I have one data source that merges or combines, joins the employee to the department. So, in that sense, no, I'm not going to be pulling in data from two different data sources, I might write one data source that pulls together data from several tables. Though. All right. Literally, could you write, you could probably write some really wild custom code to combine stuff from two data sources, but I can't think of a time where you would want to do that. So, to answer your question, typically you would create a data source that combined the data. All right. And, and, and it's okay to have two data sources, and it's okay to have one data source that joins two tables together and all that. You just have to look about it. You almost think it in terms of, you know, logical entities, you know. Not physically how it's stored in the database, but what do I want to see? I want to see employee information that's tied to their department and, and information about their department. Well, that's one logical piece of data. Now, we know physically in the database, for all the reasons I gave earlier, that's two separate entities. But our result set, that's when we write these queries, that's when we start bringing stuff together. Through the design process, we separate everything into all their entities. But for working, people need to see the data the way they need to see it. They don't need to see the data necessarily exactly in line with the way that it's structured as a table. They need, may need to see combined table A with table B. In which case, you create a data source that combines that, and you can present that in a data grid, or a grid view, rather. The old name for grid view was data grid, so if I say the word data grid, you can, you can uh, translate it in your head to grid view. Other questions? All right. 
see you over in lab.